Hi guys, you're very welcome to this channel in our con where we deal with all things in relation to educating ourselves about who and what a narcissist is, how to deal with them and how to avoid them going forward and how to look back and assess the situation or relationship we had with one in order to heal fully. Today I'd like to look at how to give the narcissist the two spiritual fingers. This came up in a recent coaching session and this expression came from I don't know where, but it's literally this podcast is going to be about getting some peace with what you've been through with a narcissist or maybe what's ongoing for you with a narcissist in how you want to handle this battle which I would always say, you know, psychology gives us great um, markers and expressions of definition and behaviour patterns. And it's a wonderful dictionary for what goes on with a narcissist. But the behaviour is behind what narcissists do. The malice, the envy, the destruction, the hate, the literally wanting to destroy people that get in their way or that they view get in their way. To me, that comes from a very dark perspective. So I'm going to call this a spiritual battle. Um, and that's the reason for the title. The overcoming part, I would like to look at what is the most effective for you in overcoming the narcissist and in actual fact what does the narcissist dislike the most in what you may do and what's the most effective way to deal with a narcissist and I'm not having a hate campaign against narcissists I just want to get that clear because sometimes in the comments you know you get people coming up and saying I you know the narcissist is a member of my family and whereas I I'm abhorred and appalled by their behaviour. I still love them in some way. And that, of course, is relevant and valid totally. But this channel is about learning about what this personality disordered person will do to you so that you can understand the best way to navigate a relationship with one or to avoid getting involved romantically with one going forward or even how to co-parent with a narcissist. So I'm guessing this podcast is kind of going to give you an idea of overcoming the aftermath maybe of a close and destructive encounter with say a narcissist in the workplace or a romantic relationship or something that is ongoing in a finished sense there may be a smear campaign going on there may be a silent discard from the narcissist who will come back at some stage and hoover because they nearly always do no matter what you think you know in relation to no they'll never come back so it's about i suppose choosing choosing your path going forward and i'm just going to outline what is the most effective path for a person's healing and the most effective path in relation to standing up for what you believe in and downing what the narcissist is doing and really avenging the situation that you were in to give you some sense of satisfaction and come out of this in a good situation or as best as possible. So... We've gone over the traits of a narcissist. There's a lot of very negative traits, despite the fact that narcissists can do some good. A lot of them are talented. Usually they're doing good for manipulative reasons to gain something because of it. Notwithstanding, you know, they have a benefit to our world. They are people, but they do have a very dark side. And for the amount of benefit that they can give, the destruction they cause in their interpersonal relationships, and indeed if you have a leader as a narcissist in politics, etc. The destruction can outweigh any measure of good that they actually do. If you're trying to 
establish a thought process when you've come out of one of these relationships and you're beginning to get angry and you really feel the total injustice of what's happened to you. And this narcissist, there are so many different scenarios, so I'll just cover a few bases. The, scenar the narcissist has either discarded you, dumped you cruelly, told you you're, you're useless and is now gone silent and totally withdrawn from you, which is when you, on the face of looking at something like this, that another person would do to another person. If you objectively look at it, it is actually mentally unstable to do something like that. It's it's way off the Richter scale in terms of any kind of normal behaviour. You know, when we're in it, we tend to kind of accept it as being normal because we've been groomed and abused in, in such a way. But honestly, looking at it objectively, think about that. Just think about that. And anyway, that's one scenario that we're going to look at. The other is that you've left the narcissist and the narcissist is stalking you and causing you a lot of trouble. And in both scenarios, there's probably a smear campaign going on so that the narcissist can get a sense of control over the situation that they may not have felt control over because they discarded you because they felt they were out of control and they, so they perceived that they deserved something better or you discarded them and they want to re-establish their sense of superiority and authority and control. So the way that they do that is they have to destroy you in as much as they possibly can within the realms of the law and sometimes not within the realms of the law. So you have a narcissist causing you a lot of hassle or the narcissist has gone totally silent on you, but has, you, you have heard, is putting the bad word out there on you and is causing problems for you and has left you in such a state that they would expect that you would come calling to their house or contact their friends and family, etc., to try and understand the situation. The two spiritual proverbial fingers that you can give the narcissist in relation to standing in your own light, standing up for what you believe in, even if you're tethering on not knowing at this stage because your identity has been so wiped out. Fundamentally, if you left the narcissist or the narcissist left you, you were getting a sense of yourself back. You were becoming your healthy, good self. And what you got for that was a punishment. So it feels pretty crap when you're overcoming in the early stages a relationship that you had with the narcissist. So basically you have a choice. And what I'm going to say to you now is when we're looking at this from a spiritual perspective, you have an enemy because this person has been doing you down and is continuing maybe to do you down or has left you in a heap financially and, you know, with no explanation. We get the picture. We're in a bad state. Let's just put all the bad character traits of the narcissist together, which are the majority, unfortunately, particularly when they're in com competition with somebody or they're, they've painted you in a dark, bad scenario that you're the enemy. So they're therefore your enemy. What they want to do is to bring you into hell and for you to fight them in their battleground where they have learned the art of warfare all their life, where they have perfected the skills in the dark arts. They want you to engage them there in the setup that they're setting up for you. They want you to come in and fight them on their battlefield of choice, where they're going to ambush you where they're the best at the dark skills and the dark arts, where they're devious, cunning, malicious, deceitful and cruel. I'm suggesting 
that we do not engage the narcissist in the dark arts. And that means essentially not reacting to the pull to their battlefield, not thinking, aha, I'm going to go in and I'm going to give the narcissist a big mouthful of what I think about them for what they've done to me and the children, my family, my home, my pets, etc. I'm going to tell them who they are and what they are. I'm actually going to cause them problems in their work. I'm going to report them. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And you go hell for leather in attacking the narcissist. You also enter your own slanderous smear campaign about the narcissist, albeit it's the truth. It's the ugly truth because it doesn't sound too good. You have literally entrapped yourself in two ways. One, you've entered the narcissist battleground where they are experts at evil. I would hope that no matter how intelligent, how capable you were, that you wouldn't win in that arena. Even if you did manage to strike the narcissist down, you know, three times and they only struck you twice, what you've essentially done is, in fact, by the very entering into the dark side of yourself, the egotistical side of yourself, the side that wants to hate and have revenge, and we all have the, the, a dark side in us. The fact that we're not narcissists mean we didn't choose the dark side. But the dark side can come out with enough provocation, with enough lack of living in our true self after the time that we've had with the narcissist. So essentially, even if you score like, say, 80-20 against the narcissist in Hell's Battlefield, the fact that you've entered that is a win for the narcissist because they can therefore point the finger and say, look at her, look at him. I told you that's what they were like. They're vicious, they're cruel, they came after me and the narcissist plays the perfect victim again. Essentially, they are perfectionists at devilish maneuvers. It's like literally a game of chess in hell they will have the last move and you will find it so much harder to go back to your true self, the things you believed in. It's, it's like a darkness will seep in and it'll be so much harder to fight and you'll be disgusted with yourself and you'll be all over the place because you won't know who you are. You won't have a, a grip on how you want to go forward. Now, there may be a certain se selection of people that are able to do that and come out of it still intact. And you may be at a stage post the narcissist where you can coldly go in and do certain things that are going to affect the narcissist. I'm not saying that it, it may not be effective, but I'm saying be very, very, very careful if you choose that path, particularly if you've just gotten out of a relationship with a narcissist, because you are not thinking straight. You're not thinking straight. The narcissist will have invaded your neural pathways. Your hormones are all over the place and you're being reactive. And reactive is the narcissist's advantage. That is what they, as predictable as they are, they play on the victim being emotionally reactive not thinking things through, not being strategic. That is where the narcissist has their greatest win, which is awful to say. So that's one proverbial spiritual finger path you can choose. You can choose not to go to hell and fight the narcissist on their battlefield where they have set you up for failure. You can stay out of that realm and arena altogether. You can reject it. You can go total no contact. 
you can go to people and places and parts of yourself where you're going to regain and rebuild and become strong again. You can start a journey of exploration into who you are, who you want to be, what type of relationship you want to have, understand what the narcissist did exactly and look at your life going forward and take it seriously. Plan what you want to do next. Don't just meander until the next narcissist comes along and offers an easy solution. You know, oh, I love you and everything is going to be OK. And you do this for me and I'll do that for you. We want to be in a position where we fully know ourselves and we're planted firmly on the ground and we understand who we are and we understand what we believe in and we understand what boundaries we have in relation to those beliefs that they're not going to be pushed around. And I don't mean in a strident, you know, fearful, paranoid way. I just mean that we're at peace. We're at peace within ourselves about, about what we would like to do, and what we wouldn't like to do. And we're not afraid anymore or we're not looking for someone outside of us to tell us who we are. We know who we are already. And if we can use the experience with this awful individual to understand ourselves better and to have to like ourselves and love ourselves, to have to choose ourselves, as I often say in these podcasts, that's the first spiritual finger you can give to the narcissist is to pay no attention to the triggers that might bring you into the narcissist world. Give no reaction. Go no contact. Go to a place of peace until you recover to an extent where you can make a decision as to how you want to play things going forward. So you have regrouped. You have a strategy going forward. And if the narcissist is still persisting in your world, you're going to make a decision then. The second proverbial spiritual finger you can give to the narcissist is to build your fortress. Is to build your fortress in that you build into belief in yourself self-belief. You've survived a terrible experience where your identity, your spirituality, your beliefs, things you might have negatively believed about yourself, things that you may have negatively been told about who you were in the past, have all been used and manipulated against you. So this is a time of cleansing, this is a time of reflection. This is a time of rescuing yourself. This is a time of landing back into yourself. This is a time of self-definition. And this is a time of deciding a strategy as to what you want to do next with your life. And if that seems way too unobtainable and far off, you make a plan. That's your destination and you're going to take small steps towards it and you're going to open up doors along the way that you don't know what's behind those doors. But if you don't take the steps towards them and you don't go through them, you'll never know. You'll stay stuck and you will be vulnerable. You'll be tethering on the edge of the narcissist battleground. Hell, you won't be in a safe place where you're fully landed where you're fully protected, no matter how many narcissists come towards you, because you won't be, they won't be able to control you because you'll be aware, you're educated about what narcissists are, and on the other side of yourself, you know who you are. So going forward, the second proverbial spiritual finger you can raise at that narcissist is success. Is what they deem as success. Is ego success? 
his spiritual success is having built a good, great, amazing life where you can access happiness through your own endeavours, where you feel good about yourself. And I'm not saying like you feel good about yourself all the time, but in the majority, you feel good about yourself. Imagine, imagine being, you know, even if you're not quite there yet, and it is a journey, it's always a journey. And enjoying the journey is so important. Imagine that. Imagine having been left by this individual who's told you that you're a piece of crap, that nobody would want you. Nobody. <laughs> You've got a lot of problems. You need to talk to someone. You need to talk to someone. You know the story, guys. Or this person is so much better. They're just so much better. Like they compare you like a washing machine or a car. And then you go and you make such a success of your life in as far as you measure success. But the narcissist hears and everybody knows that for some odd reason, this crazy daisy has managed to make a great life for themselves. Yet the narcissist said that they were unstable. The narcissist said that, you know, that they were an, an addict. The narcissist said all the things the narcissist says, all the projections, they cheated. They were verbally abusive. They were this, they were that. You didn't go to hell. You didn't play into the narcissist set up battlefield. You didn't do it. You literally raised the first proverbial spiritual finger at the narcissist. And then you raised the second. Excuse me, I better turn them like that for YouTube. But you can go like that at the end. You can go peace. I mean, when you're fighting the spiritual battle, you can go like that. But when you're, you fought it and literally won, you can go, which way is peace? Peace. <laughs> It's interesting, it's interesting. Sometimes when people come out of these relationships, they're so frustrated because they've really been duped and we turn in on ourselves and say, how could I have been so stupid? Or why did I put up with that for so long? Or this is a terrible situation where I can't get out of bed, I can't function. Like, what was that? What happened? Who is that? Are there people like that out there? You know the story, guys. To think, you know, what way do I go forward? Like, do I deal with what's going on with the narcissist? Do I go and ask them why they did it? You know, when you don't know what a narcissist is. Do I go and tell people? Do I defend my name? What do I do? Well, I'm telling you, having gone through the experience, understanding the narcissistic personality disorder unfortunately too well having listened to client stories in my opinion raising the two spiritual fingers to the narcissist as i've outlined in this podcast or a similar or variation of that is the way to go forward that ensures your protection and ensures your greatest chance of peace, joy, happiness, and success in your life, and ultimately protection. Anyone that's missing Remy, um, I'm just gonna turn the, the, the camera for you because I know a lot of you like to see him. He is down there asleep in his doggy bed. Remy, you gonna say hello or no? No, he's fast asleep. He's fast asleep and he's happy just for, for some people really like to see him. He is here and he's going to go out on a walk now soon. OK, guys, thank you very much for listening. Oh, please consider sharing. Um, I believe the channel is not coming up in the search engines. I have to try and do something about that. Someone was saying to me, you know, a lot of people actually say I only just discovered you. You don't come up 
when people put searches in about narcissism, there's only one or two big channels come up all the time, which is a pity because it's good to have a variety of opinions. So if you can do, if you can do anything to help out, like like, share and subscribe, um, I'd be so grateful and it keeps us going and it keeps us doing this. So have a wonderful weekend. Um, happy belated 4th of July to everyone in America. This is the 5th of July. This podcast is going out and the elections then in the UK. And I'm not too sure what's going on in the rest of the world. There are the two kind of two sides of Ireland. So that's kind of the news I generally keep up on. Take great care and I'll see you again soon. Bye.